So those are my hints for, for the service and let me walk you through the order of service. So we have the same general um, markings across the service, gathering, reflecting, sending and sharing, but the reflecting is a little bit different. Um, so today was designed to be an intergenerational service. Um, it's all about celebrating spring. And that in fact, we're sitting on the spring equinox and it's a balance between two seasons of the year, winter and spring. So you're gonna see that theme. Um, so we decided to have some fun with it and, and build it into like as if it were a day. Um, so there's awakening, balancing, reflecting, and then winding down are the sections that um, occur in the service. Otherwise, it pretty much follows the same with the breakout sessions at the end. One thing I do need to tell you though, um, I it, under the balancing section, there's a slideshow of celebrations of the spring equinox from around the world and the music that accompanies it the credit fell off somehow when it got recorded and put together so it's um the song is flower duet and it's performed by Catherine tollefson beth kinzel and nate kinzel and i wanted to make sure that they got credit for it one more thing that's unusual today we are going to use the chat box in three parts of the service and the breakout session at the end, but the three parts in the middle of the service. Um, so be ready for that. It's set up so that everyone can put something in the chat box, but it will only come to Andy, myself, and the breakout session facilitators. But I will be reading what you chat um, in three different parts of the service. So just be ready for that. And we can have some interactive fun. And now let us get started by lighting our chalice. As I say every week, if you have one at home, please light yours as well. And join me in the chalice lighting words in unison. We light our chalice as a symbol of the warmth of our community. Our flame ignited by trust and respect shines brightly on our togetherness and diversity. Our chalice forged through honest and respectful communication unifies us in healthy relationship. Let us renew our covenant with one another again through the warmth of this flame. Enter, rejoice, and log in. Our service today marks the spring equinox. It doesn't mean that spring weather is here for good. It means that winter, in all her beauty and glory, is preparing to take leave of us. Her spell is breaking, even if we might get a little more of her ice or snow yet. But it is time, fully time, to celebrate that spring is waking up. Good morning, spring. The balance from cold to warm has shifted. Our theme today is balance. So balance we must. Oh well, it happens. Let's get on with the service. Maybe I'll have something to learn about balance. Today's service is being led and supported by Reverend Leah Angiri, our Associate Minister, Ali Peters, our Intern Minister, Dave Valguth, our Lay Worship Leader, Reverend Jim Coakley, 
one of our affiliated community ministers, Kim Hartman, our Director of Religious Education, Steve Seek, our music director, our wonderful musicians and singers, and Adam Robinson, our AV tech. Thank you to everyone who has made this morning's service possible. This year, we are focusing on growing resilience. We're digging in to what it means to grow ourselves and our community to be sources of life, even when things get tough. Right now, we are focusing on balance. It can feel hard in tumultuous times to find balance, but our goal will be to explore ways to create balance together. It is now time to settle into your space, wherever you are, to take a deep breath and be present to this time together, even from afar. Good morning. In a moment, we get to hear our beloved fellowship choir sing the song, Morning Has Broken. As we listen and sing along with them to this song, the song that's about mornings and beginnings and the awakening of spring, I invite us all to get our bodies woken up as well with some morning stretches. Go ahead and give your body the gift of stretching in whatever way feels good to you. Let's let the muscles in our body sing this song along with our voices. Awakening in the early spring is a lot like being in winter. Even if it's cold, even if it's going to get warmer throughout the day, it often starts out cold because the sun hasn't had time yet to warm the earth. There's a lot to love and appreciate about winter, and this is an especially good time to name some of those favorite parts of our coldest, darkest season because it's fresh in our mind. We've all, after all, been just living it for months. So let's celebrate winter on its way out, not to be with us again for a whole year now. So I want you to type something that you like about winter into the chat now, and I'll read aloud some of those gifts as they come in. The solitude of winter walks, fire in the fireplace, sunshine on the snow, Softly falling flakes. Hot chocolate. Fire in the fireplace again. I think we all have a lot of fireplaces up here. Ice skating and sledding. Rest. 
skiing, ice shows on Green Bay, holidays, animal prints in the fresh snow. I love the silence during, felt during winter thanks to the blanketing of snow, which softens everything. Candlelight, sparkly snow, Christmas, icicles, college learning, cozy hibernation, crunching the snow and frozen puddles, snow angels, snow falling quietly. These are all lovely, very good. Dog romping in the snow, Coco. That wonderful snow fog we had for a week in point. Shoveling on a quiet evening. Dark starlit nights, snowman. Holding heavy wool knitting in my lap. There's a knitter. Yule, short days and long nights, warm mittens, all winter holidays. Sitting with my beloveds in the evenings, frozen lakes, soup. <laughs> all right, time for reflection, glue vine. I love when the crocuses poke through the snow because then spring is coming. Ha <laughs> ha ha. I actually love the beautiful white stuff and big storms when the only when only the garden Buddha's crown still shows. Very good. Lots of reading time, riding fat tire bike in the snow. Snow on the branches of the service berry outside my kitchen window. Deer tracks in the snow. These are lovely images. These are wonderful and a lot of variety. No slipping on sidewalks. An excuse or reason to stay inside, walking on a frozen lake, watching snow fall from nice warm home. All right, well, thank you everyone. Thank you winter for your many gifts. We bless you on your way. We bless you on your way as we in the earth awaken to the coming spring. Good morning, everyone. For me, March is often about transition from inside to outside for sports when March comes around. Leaving the gym to the baseball field for pitching, fielding ground balls, and getting dirty. This year, I was unbalanced by the news that a childhood friend had passed away unexpectedly last week after we had reconnected after many years. My friend's passing allowed me to reconnect with friends from my Lutheran grade school days. I spent eight years as a young classmate with these people and realized I missed them and should have tried to renew my relationship with them before a funeral brought us all together. In reading about life renewal, I researched rekindling old friendships and came upon an article by Janif Navalon titled Why Old Friends Are the Best of Friends. And she writes, according to research, preschool friendships are important in the development of social and emotional skills, which then contributes to our sense of belongingness that we carry well into adulthood. Childhood friends are important because they are our first social connections. Our interactions with them affect how we behave socially for the rest of our lives. In these ways, our early peer relationships help us establish social and emotional balance, which can help steady us for the rest of our days. Our childhood relationships are also our links back to our childhood selves. 
when we remember our childhood friends, we remember what it was like to be imaginative and innocent. When you become an adult and move into parenthood, looking back on your childhood friendships helps you navigate the complexities of parenthood. Maybe give that old friend a call, see how they're holding up. It might be time to reintroduce that friendship into your life as you open the next chapter on your life. As spring and summer approach and more and more people get vaccinated, we will all have the chance to move from a virtual digital method of interacting with friends to once again be face to face with old and new friends. This too will be its own balancing act and I look forward to reconnecting with people in person and I'm optimistic about the future. Hi everyone. I'm so happy to be with all of you today, especially our young people and the young at heart. No matter how old we are, we always have things to learn and discover. And I think that's one of the best parts about being a Unitarian Universalist. You know, we don't always have to know everything and we can change our minds as we grow and as we find out new information. So right now, there is something inside our wonder box. I don't even know what it is. See, I don't have all the answers. Do you know what could be inside? Do you have any guesses? If you have a guess, go ahead and type it into the chat box or you can ask your grown up to type it. We'd love to see what you all think might be in the box today. So I'm gonna give you all some time to wonder. And I'll just wait. The anticipation is killing me. <laughs> I can't wait to see what all of you have guessed. But right now, I'm pretty eager to open it. I think it's time. Do you think you can help me out? Do you think you could give like a drum roll? Awesome. All right. Here we go. Um, okay, I'm a, little, I'm a little confused. This one, today's Wonder Box seems a little weird. I'll explain why. You see, in the Wonder Box, there was a book, but we don't have a story to read as part of the service today. At least I don't think so. If we did, no one told me. Hmm. And I mean, <laughs> this is a cookbook. The title of this book is Lydia's Common Sense Italian Cooking. Oh gosh. Okay. I have no idea what this has to do with anything that we're talking about today. We're not talking about cooking. We're talking, we're talking about balance. I'm sorry. Hmm. I can't for the life of me see what this book might have to do with balance. Do you have any ideas? Let's think. Here's an idea. Do you have a book somewhere around you? It could be any book. It doesn't have to be common sense Italian cooking, <laughs> any book will do. Do you think that we could balance our books together? First, you have to make sure that it's okay with your grown up, And then we all have to make sure that we step away from our devices. <laughs> and we should check around to make sure that there's nothing around for the book to fall on, no one around to get hit by the book if it falls. That would not be good. And let's go for it. Okay, this is um, There we go. Huh. You know, sometimes it can feel like we have to balance a lot in life, right? We've got a lot of things going on. Like maybe for you, it's 
school and taking care of yourself and your loved ones with the virus that's going around and, and getting enough sleep and finding enough time for fun and play and doing what your parents need you to do. It can be really hard to balance all of those things, right? But with this book on my head, I'm actually noticing that balance gets a bit easier if we're able to find a chance to pause and be still for a little while. And if we're able to pay attention to how we're feeling. Maybe we can all remember that as we try to balance whatever it is that comes up in life. Thanks for balancing with me, everyone. We've been talking a lot about how the Earth's cycle is balanced between night and day during the spring equinox. But even though the amount of daylight may be balanced, the arrival of spring is different in all different places around the world. You know, we live pretty far north in the northern hemisphere, so we often have ice and snow during the spring equinox, just like we did this week. But other parts of the world where it's always much warmer, the outdoors can look a lot different than in Wisconsin. Maybe it's for that reason that many other places have these elaborate festivals and rituals outdoors to celebrate the end of winter and the beginning of spring. Well, I'm gonna take you on a quick slide tour around the world so that you get an idea. And there's no good or bad, right or wrong. Just remember, it's all a beautiful balance, just like our Earth. Enjoy.
earlier in the service, but I had a really hard time balancing that dang plate. Don't feel bad, Leah. It's kind of early in the morning. Plus, you've got a lot going on these days, so you probably don't have a lot of time to just practice balancing. Yes, most of our friends and members should have gotten my email that I'm going to move across the country this summer. And then later in the fall, I'm going to end my fellowship ministry. It's been really, really busy lately for me. Wow. Well, that's a lot to wake up to and then try to balance. That is big news. Now I can guess what your reflection is going to be about later in the service. I was confused for a minute when I looked at the order of service because the usual categories of gathering, exploring, deepening, broadening are gone. We're starting our balance theme by talking about how we relate to the weather as it comes and goes, in and out, around and around, a season cycle in and around, and so does time, every year, and even in small ways, even a day has its own cycle. So we're imagining this service as a complete day by starting with awakening and then moving to balancing and then reflecting and then closing by winding down. And guess what? We're even going to have a lullaby later. Yeah, that's true, Jim. And this part of the service is all about balance. Hey, guys, I want to see if I can balance this pen. Do you want to try it with me? Oh, I have a pen. I'm in. Ditto. Maybe people will join us at home. Okay. Um, sounds good. All right. Ready, set, go. Oh. Hey. <laughs> okay. That was easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> hmm. That might have been a little harder than I expected. <laughs> I guess that's balance for you. Keeping something steady when it wants to be in motion is kind of tricky, huh? I guess that's why it's good to practice. After all, most of us will probably mm -hmm. always be seeking balance in one way or another in life. Well, hello, spring. Welcome. We're in so glad you're here with us today. So this is our next time to chat. What do you like about this season? So fill the chat box with what you like about spring and I will start um, reading them. It looks like some people went ahead. That's really good, extra credit, right? Um, it says a stuffed bunny, a bunny, hope for spring renewal bulbs, stuffed toy, balancing out ingredients, Lorelei. Um, I think that was from Lorelei. Snowdrops, crocuses, um, planting my garden, the first sighting of the migrating bird, plants start coming up, longer days, daylight savings time, buds and blossoms, intoxicating blooming trees, daffodils. You guys are really prolific here. The joy of flowers popping out of the ground, hearing the sandhill cranes, the smell of the earth, the light, the light, the light. My birthday, um, squirrels, higher sun, seeing birds flying back, seeing neighbors outside again, the flowers beginning to grow, goofy baby animals, the start of camping season, flowers, 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 farmers markets, crocuses, snowdrops, daffodils, ordering seeds and plants, robins. Obviously you like spring out there. It's easier to go outside. You can just go out without snow pants or coat or hat. The shift in air changing Garlic coming up in the garden, planting snow peas, opening waters on the bay and the river, jelly beans, sunshine, drunken birds on fermented <laughs> berries. So that's a good one. Um, rhubarb. Wow, I couldn't keep up. The sight of an English landscape in spring. We know who that one came from. Uh, new energy. the sounds of dogs, bluebells in the woods. All right, wow, what great images. 
delicate white blossoms on the service berry outside my kitchen window, and then the red berries and waxing, wax wings. Trillium, trillium blossoming, uh, red-winged blackbirds. That's true, they always are prolific in the spring. Vitamin D, someone's health conscious here. Pussy willow cat, pussy willow catkins in the yard. Uh, birds beginning to nest, kids waiting for buses. <laughs> The cherry blossoms in Washington. Bicycles, very good. Bicycles come back out unless they were fat tire bikes that people used all winter. All right, well, thank you. And thank you, Spring, for your many gifts. We revel in your growing presence. Everyday life involves many feats of balance. I hope that you have heard by now about my own balancing act of sorts, which is that my family is relocating to Portland, Oregon this summer. If you missed it, let us know and we can get your information on file. My family is in Portland. It's my hometown and my partner's next professional opportunity is there. This area has not been an easy place for us as a gay black family. Much as we dearly love the fellowship and her people, it is right for us to leave. This fellowship has been a good home. You have offered us love and stability. You have been kind and generous to me. I've lived here over nine years. It is unbalancing to begin the practical tasks of moving and the emotional work of uprooting where I have been planted. My leaving will upend the normal rhythm of fellowship life, not catastrophically and definitely not fatally, but in some real ways. I certainly feel knocked off balance and you might too. Or you might feel another unsettling emotion like fear or excitement or anger or some mix that could be hard to identify. Remember when I tried to balance a plate and it fell? That is the sort of situation where my rude inner perfectionist likes to pop up and inform me that everything really ought to balance tightly enough to prevent shifts and wobbles. And if anything crashes to the ground, even if it's not something that is actually breakable, then that is definitive proof of my complete failure. I don't know about yours, but my rude inner perfectionist is a big jerk. So I just thank her for that input and put her on mute. A more helpful approach to times of tricky equilibrium might be to consider that sometimes we are the item jostling for prime position amid the rub and pull of life's many movements. It can be precisely when we are in the throes of adjusting and absorbing to the ups and downs and side swoops that we are most likely to discover with pride and delight even that we are not bone thin porcelain destined to be abandoned on the high shelf, never allowed to be part of the party. We are in fact made for daily use, sturdy and virtually indestructible. 
or so I have discovered in a way. This past year, amid pandemic parenting, election unrest, and working from home, I felt like I was losing my spirit and humor. It made it hard to summon the courage I needed to face discernment, moving, and all the tender goodbyes we will need to say to one another. Not yet, but come November. I am going to serve you wholeheartedly until then. But the difficulty of COVID conditions and election season in Trump's America unbalanced me enough that it gave me clarity. My family needs this change. We're excited about it. The lack of balance that led to this insight was a threat, but it was also an opportunity to rediscover joy. I was able to gather the momentum necessary to launch. Balancing acts require our attention. After living here for a couple years, I observed to Marie Luna that Wisconsin winters slam into summer with no spring cushion. She countered that spring is its own unique season if you know how to recognize it. And finally, with a few more years of noticing under my belt, I can now describe the spring-specific wet, heavy snow that melts sooner and the watery slush that coats frozen ponds and puddles, eagerly sought for splashing by my kids and assiduously avoided by my cyclist partner. And the woodpeckers. I googled, do woodpeckers peck all year? But I failed to come up with hard science to back up my certain belief that woodpeckers are especially loud in the spring, even accounting for my being outside more to hear them better when temperatures rise. Those little creatures make such a resounding racket every March and April. Woodpeckers aside, this weekend we acknowledge the vernal equinox with litanies that celebrate the movement from cold to warm. And we recognize that the linchpin of this is spring. Yesterday, March 20th, at 4.37 a.m. in our time zone, spring came to the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, the March equinox marks the start of autumn, while the September equinox ushers in spring. For those of us on the north half of this planet, we are now tilted more toward the sun's light and warmth than away from it. As earth and atmosphere reorient, it gives us humans a push to shift as well. What moves for us seasonally or otherwise? What are we balancing more or less or differently these days? What are our rhythms and why? My balance is shifting in ways I couldn't have anticipated even last spring. For example, I'm suddenly not sure if I've thanked you enough. I need you to know that this is a good ministry I have gotten to share with you. More shift will happen as and after I depart. For some among us, the movement of my leaving might cause major imbalance. And for others, it will be a quiet settling, barely worth mentioning. 
There is no right or wrong. Only the opportunity to notice that we, like the seasons of our planet home, are all constantly given the gift and challenge to wobble and flex and find balance and to be balanced. May we find both movement and stability to help hold it all as together we move forward toward summer. May it always be so. Well, it's March, folks. So celebrating summer, it means you have to look all the way back to summers from the past and then look ahead a little bit. And before we know it, summer will be with us again. As Leah said, it tends to crash into summer here instead of a light, slow um, creep towards it. So let's type about summer now. So type in the chat what you like about summer and I'll read those comments. Swimming, reading on the deck. Although Ramon is out on the deck this morning. Baseball, long dog walks, fresh garden veggies and fruits, long days, jumping in lakes, the warmth of the sun, fullness of leaves, school break, cold lemonade, enjoying a beach, the sounds of morning doves as you wake up outside, tomatoes that sing, gardening, Will fall come already? Long sunny days on the deck, listening to classical music and reading, hot weather, wearing dresses, the sense of leisure, peaches, long slow evenings sitting outside, outdoor music, riding horses outside, grilling outside, tomatoes ripening in my garden, sunburn, tomatoes, peppers, flowers, no jackets, just shorts, open windows at night, camping, bicycling, riding the mountain bike trail, being outside to eat, read, or whatever I choose. Very good. College summer break. Barefoot. Pride. Good. Watching birds. Fireworks. Family and friends visiting. Sitting in the shade. Girls in bikinis. <laughs> Star staring at the water my screened porch, music festivals, fishing, visiting with neighbors outside, everything. <laughs> Protests in Sister Bay, storms, Kayak, eating outside again. UU outside gatherings, yeah, those will be back. Mosquitoes, now there's a good one to look forward to. Shady trees. Pick your own berries. Bumblebees. Baby animals growing up. Convertibles. Summer pudding, summer pudding, well, that's interesting. Hammocks, outdoor theaters, especially up in Door County. My black currants, red currants and raspberries. All the fresh vegetables and fruits. Pizza on the farm. Those are all great. They really bring out the images of summer. Oh, that one rooster you want to shut up. That's a good one. Monarchs on the zinnias. <laughs> Beautiful images, beautiful. All right, thank you for submitting them. And we'll keep going on with our service. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to finish it out. Thank you, Summer, for your many gifts. 
We aren't quite ready for you yet, but we are looking forward to being with you soon. Now we'll get on with our service. As we start to wind down our worship this morning, I invite us to place a hand either on our belly or on our heart, or maybe both. And take a few breaths with me. Feel the air coming in. Feel the air going out. How does that feel? For me, that made me feel calm. Now let's check in with our body. Are there any places that maybe don't feel good? Maybe there's a part of your body that hurts or muscles that feel tight or maybe like they need to move. Let's take some time to give that part of our bodies just a little love. Do this with me if you're able. Let's rub our hands together. I'm starting to feel a little bit of warmth between my hands. Do you feel that warmth? Let's imagine that that warmth that we feel is love. Now that we've got that love and that warmth between our hands, let's bring it to a part of us that needs to feel a little bit better. Maybe that means giving your shoulders a little bit of a massage. Maybe it means placing your hands over your heart, on your chest. Maybe for you, it means rubbing your head. Let's keep treating our bodies with, with this kind of tenderness as we listen to this lullaby offered by Steve. Oh, no. 
And now, as I extinguish my flame, please do the same with your chalice at home. And join me in saying our joint benediction and blessing to each other. May we grow in oneness with all living things and in oneness with ourselves. May we be gentle, accepting, and loving with ourselves and with others. I hope you'll stay for the